Well, we're grabbing lunch here on the North Shore and we're at Giovanni's. It's a garlic shrimp truck and I absolutely love garlic shrimp. And I wish this was 4D because if you could smell the garlic, you, this video would be much more enjoyable for you. These things are loaded. I mean, absolutely loaded with garlic. And to the point that the scoops of rice are covered with their own garlic. And I don't really know what to say other than I don't think Madeline's gonna kiss me for a week after this. And I may not want to kiss her. All right, so let's go right in. Oh. That was pretty good. The shrimp is very fresh. Now, Shrimp is not something that they catch in the waters off of Hawaii. They do have some farm-raised shrimp spots in Kauai. I don't know where they got this shrimp from, but it is fresh. Uh, it's just not from the, the ocean uh, locally. Um, that said, it really is kind of a tradition up and down the North Shore here to do these garlic shrimp spots. And uh, we picked a good one. Look at that. Dripping with flavor. Look at all this garlic. <laughs> There's so much garlic. Yeah, we've got the scampi, and then we got hot sauce on the side. We asked him if between the spicy and the hot, which we should, we should get, he said neither. He said get the hot sauce on the side. So that makes me think it's pretty spicy. And uh, I'll go without, and then I will try it after my first bite here. Ooh, a little bit of work getting it out. A little messy. All right, it was good. The garlic flavor is just taking a hold of this little shrimp here. All right, we're gonna go for the spicy. Let's see. Ooh, yeah. Kind of has like a like a Louisiana hot sauce spice to it. That's what it reminds me of. Maybe it's just the shrimp, the garlic. Kind of feels like that to me. It also feels a little Italian. Kind of smells like, maybe it's the scampi. <laughs> you put this on top of some pasta, it'd also be really delicious. We do get the rice. But that's why we got the rice. Mm. We're just soaking up all the flavor, all the juices, all that goodness down at the bottom here. That's good. My rice has soaked up a lot of garlic juice goodness. <laughs> really, really good. I am gonna probably be breathing fire for the rest of the day because it was a lot of garlic, but I like garlic. We finished up our two plates of shrimp here. It was absolutely delicious. Giovanni's was a great stop. Tonight we're dining at Helena's. It's in the Kalihi neighborhood of Honolulu and we wanted to come and get a meal that really showed what Hawaiian food was and pretty much all signs pointed to Helena's. Helena's actually won a James Beard Award in 2000. Their founder, Helen Chalk, started this place and it's been open since 1946. It is truly a family business, all about Ohana here. And they have been in business for, I believe, 75, 76 years. They'll be celebrating 80 years in a few years, which is pretty amazing. So it's still run by her grandson, and they have been visited by chefs from all over the world, and we're very excited to dine here tonight. Okay. Well, the nice part here is the food comes out really fast, and so we got our rice, but we also got a couple other treats. We got the short rib, pipi kala, which is done paniolo style. Paniolo are the cowboys here in Hawaii, and so they actually basically dry age this. Every morning they hang it, and it basically dry ages the steak, and they go through sometimes 400 or 500 short ribs a day, which is pretty impressive. Um, we also got beef stew. That was Madeline's request. It looks really good. We got the Kalua pork. Uh, that's pork that's been cooked in an emu or in that style, kind of the luau style. We have here the salmon. It's also, it's also covered in tomatoes. So this is a reference to the missionaries that came over to Hawaii. I'm gonna go with the stew. I know, beef stew in Hawaii, but 
It looked really good in pictures and it sounds really good. Okay, let's go a little broth. That's really good. There's a lot of flavor. I mean, back home, it's cold, so kind of, you know, we're entering fall, entering stew season, so I think it's appropriate. The beef just falls apart in your mouth, and uh, so do the vegetables there. They're very soft. Everything's very well cooked. Mm. Mm, really good. Well, I've been waiting to try the short rib, and we're just gonna go right in. It looks delicious. It's been pretty much dry aged. Mm. It's very tender. And a very intense meat flavor from that process they put it through. See why they go through 400 today. And you just kind of eat it like this. Oh man. I'm kind of mixing a bunch of stuff together because they have this chili pepper water that um, I poured all over my rice and it is spicy and delicious. And I put a little bit of the broth from my stew and then we're gonna mix it with the Kahlua pork and just make a mess. That pork is really good. I think that's some of the best Kahlua pork that we've had since we've been out in Hawaii. It's so tasty. It's shredded perfectly. A nice smoky flavor. I like it with the uh, chili pepper water. Fun. The salmon lo mein. There's like little pieces of salmon in here, like diced up with the tomatoes and the onions. It's good, like kind of imagine like a pico de gallo, but then there's an extra salmon, smoked salmon portion. I'm just gonna add it into everything else. Get it all together. I like it. I like, like eating family? like this. I do feel like family. And everyone's kind of, everyone has a different variation of pretty much the same meal. So it's like a big community here eating dinner together. You also get a dessert finisher. It's coconut jello. It's good. I don't know why to order. <laughs> it's definitely coconut. Spices and everything kind of calms everything down. Helena's was absolutely delicious, and if you are in the Honolulu area and you want some traditional Hawaiian food, this is the place to come. We are at Scratch Kitchen. Now, the one meal that we have not gotten here yet in Hawaii in the weeks we've been here is Loco Moco. And traditionally, that comes with eggs on top of hamburger, with gravy and rice. Here at Scratch Kitchen, I ordered something a little bit different. It does have eggs on it, it has rice, but it comes with an adobo pork instead of a burger, and I'm pretty excited about that. And Adam ordered pancakes. We have not had pancakes at all in Hawaii. He ordered the milk and cereal pancakes, which comes with fruity pebbles and cornflakes on top. Someone up at a table behind us ordered it and it looked beautiful and I think that's why he chose it. So I'm pretty excited for those to come out just for how they're gonna look. Well, I've given up on the Beachbody for 2021. That's why we have this meal right here. 
Now, this is uh, four pancakes topped with bananas, strawberries, blueberries. Those are healthy. The fruity pebbles and the frosted flakes, not so much. This is also milk syrup. Mm. Those are really fluffy pancakes. I actually like the milk syrup, though it's not as good as Vermont maple syrup, straight from the source. This is the right choice. Breakfast pancakes and Coca-Cola. This is my loco moco. I've got two sunny side eggs up on top of this adobo pork under here. Lots of rice and a kind of a sweeter gravy. There's a lot of different versions of this dish and so everyone kind of does their own twist and tries to modernize it. So let's go right here. Let's get that going there. Yes. That's a gravy. What? That's its own kind of gravy. It is its own kind of gravy. It's really good. The egg, the egg yolk on the rice is really good. Like I said, the gravy on here is kind of sweet. Pork is good. I was thinking adobo would be spicy. It's not spicy. It's got some good flavor. It's good mixed in with everything. It's a very like hearty filling breakfast. I think like if maybe if you were you went out surfing, you came back, you were really hungry. This would probably be the- It's not how they keep their bodies. It's not how they keep their bodies, but you work up a big hunger when you're surfing. So, or you're hiking, or you're out doing things. It's about balance. So, if you work up a big hunger at the beach, I can see this being a very hearty meal. Couldn't finish it. It's good. There's a lot of pancakes. It's definitely not a short stack. But I will say this. I was really surprised at how much I like the fruity pebbles on the pancakes. It just worked really well. Scratch Kitchen was a great brunch stop today. Um, we were just saying, like, if we lived in Honolulu, we would be eating here all the time because their menu is awesome. So if you're in the area, I would head over to Scratch Kitchen. I've been to Shake Shack in New York, and I've been to Crack Shack, that's a chicken place, in San Diego. So when I was in Waikiki Beach and saw a place called Steak Shack, I thought, well, I want to look it up. They have pretty good reviews, so I thought, let's check it out. 12 ounce steak plate, medium rare, and then also one uh, chicken plate. So we got a 10 ounce steak plate, and we got a six ounce chicken plate. We're gonna split it a bit, but uh, I'm gonna dive right in. It's a steak shack, so I'm going steak. They give you a little sauce. You get a little rice. A nice piece of steak right there. Mmm. It's definitely medium rare. It's really well seasoned. And uh, that's a good sauce. I think it's kind of like a teriyaki sauce. We've loved the food in Hawaii. But any chance we're getting to have greens or vegetables, we are fully taking advantage of. So yes, it is the steak shack, but I went with chicken. We're gonna mix and match, like Adam said, he got steak, I got chicken. Looks great. Six ounces of chicken looks just as much as the steak, so it's a huge portion. And let's just, let's just go pure chicken here. Looks really good. And you really can't beat that view right here. Big giant place of steak and chicken. <laughs> We really know how to eat the beach, Yeah, we, I don't think we are. We're not trying to be skinny here in Hawaii. Well, 
That was a delicious lunch. I could not finish mine. Adam very impressively ate his whole plate of steak, so that should tell you how good this place is. Right now we're heading over to Waikiki Brewing Company to grab a little lunch here in Waikiki Beach. Well, we're in downtown Honolulu. We stopped in Waikiki Brewery to get a little beer and pizza. And we're on beer number one. It's the Craft Light. That's pretty good. I wanted to start off with a light beer and uh, maybe my next one will be like, a bit more adventurous. They've won quite a bit of awards here. It's an independent craft brewery. And we've been trying to go to a number of craft breweries here when we're in the islands of Hawaii. And so far they've all been terrific and this one's starting off pretty good as well. A red ale with a hint of jalapeno. It's actually very good. I don't think I've ever had beer with jalapeno in it. Um, and it's it's kind of fitting with a jalapeno pizza. So um, I like it. I like going places to get adventurous with their beers and this is certainly one of them. Well, we really enjoyed our lunch at the Waikiki Brewing Company. It was a really fun stop here in Honolulu. We had a great time, their beers are great, and uh, pizza was pretty good too. We haven't done too much nightlife here in Hawaii because being at the beach all day takes a lot out of you. Um, but tonight in Honolulu, we're gonna go do a little food crawl, and uh, it's a lively atmosphere here. It's looking pretty fun. Right now we are outside of Maguro Bros. It is a poke spot, it is takeout. So we're waiting outside. The special today was bluefin tuna and that's what we went with. This is the bluefin tuna. It's supposed to be fattier than the yellowfin. Uh, so more of a delicacy. And so this really isn't poke, it's close. Compared to ahi, yellowfin, it's Definitely a fattier. Almost looks like a marbled steak. Mmm. And it kind of melts in your mouth. It's uh, it's kind of crazy. It's like the wag wagyu beef of the sea. Do you know talk about an area of food that I almost have no expertise in? It's sashimi and the different cuts of fish that's used in sashimi. I basically know tuna, salmon, um, the basic ones you can get in the Midwest that are packed on ice and not fresh like this. Get some rice. If you know more about this stuff and know what this yellow thing is, please let us know. Mm. So we're going rice, yellow pad. It's kind of sweet. It kind of tastes like an egg. That might be what it is. It looks like fruit. I know, but it could be fruit, but there's like an egg consistency to it as well. So let's go. Oh, I missed the rice. I'm gonna go buy a food. I like the spot. In warm weather areas, I like getting takeout food and just kind of eating outside. Hawaii definitely qualifies as a warm weather area. Last bite of bluefin tuna on a street food tour in Waikiki in Honolulu. Mm. I wanted to eat a lot of fish while I was here in Hawaii. I think I've had eight different types. I know there's a lot more than what I've accomplished to find. That didn't make sense. There's a lot more types of fish than what I managed to find, but uh, fresh is fresh. The fish is so fresh here, and uh, I feel like mission accomplished and my goal to eat as much fish as possible. Maguro Bros, great stop for poke or fresh fish. 
We're gonna keep rolling here on a little street food tour in Honolulu. The next stop on our street food tour is Marikame Udon. This is a Japanese restaurant you can take out, you can dine in. I think we're gonna dine in. They've got noodles and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna order. We've been looking forward to this one. This is one of the highest reviewed places in Honolulu. I think all of Hawaii. And uh, the line's all the way down the block. The line is all the way down the block. But we waited. The, um, the larger size. So we got these beef noodles, it's a huge bowl, and um, egg noodles, broth, and then a uh, thinly shaved beef. I'm gonna just try broth first. Well, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go in here. It's not this. Okay, we're gonna get some noodle here going. Okay, let's just go in. It's not gonna be graceful. Mm. Oh, that's good. The broth is really good. It's got like umami flavor. And the noodles are a really thick egg noodle. We saw them like pulling them out <laughs> earlier and packing them all up. Mm. Really, really good. It's like a really dense noodle. And the beef is shaved really thin. Mm. There's onions in here too. We are splitting this. This is a huge bowl. I could probably eat a whole one on my own though because I'm really enjoying it. And luckily it cooled off outside so it's not hot while I'm eating it. Mm. Well, when you get in here, you order your noodles or your bowls first, and then you kind of grab your tray and you go along the line. They got a big line of tempura that you can choose from. They also had a um, what looks like a McDonald's hash brown. Uh, this is the potato tempura. Mm. It's a lot better than McDonald's hash brown. Everything so far just has a really rich flavor, and uh, I've been saying this a lot, but if I lived in Honolulu, I'd eat here a lot. This whole piece, it's not a vacuum. That is, I think, how they cook the noodles quickly. Anyway, if I lived in Honolulu, I'd eat here a lot. This whole piece costs us like $14.50. It's gonna keep us full. Although we might go to another place after this, because there's a street food tour. This is the big chicken katsu. It's chicken that is uh, deep fried. Opa! This is the big chicken katsu. Love katsu where I didn't get it. This is a lively atmosphere in here. It's, it's quite fun. Mmm. Look at that. Madeline's gonna like this. Well, I might give her a belly egg. The noodle is actually a Sanuki noodle. It's from the Pagawa region of Japan which is in the southern part of Japan. We just talked to one of the uh, very nice individuals who works here and he explained their entire process about how these noodles in the Pagawa region are handmade. They actually figured out a way to make these noodles by machine here without losing any quality. And they're a thicker noodle, so when they go in that broth, they don't get soggy right, right away. That noodle actually just soaks up that broth and it kind of gets better as you start doing the bowl. We just finished up at Marukami Udon. It was absolutely delicious. Those noodles are top notch. It's a little busy, so just be prepared to wait in line and it is totally worth the wait. Now we're going to keep on eating here in Honolulu and we're going to get some shave ice. We're at Ice Monster here in Honolulu. They have giant shave ice. We said, let's go to a small sweet tree. We failed. If I've learned one thing in life, I always get the small. I have to throw a 
because even though smalls are huge, this is of course the biggest small I've ever seen in my life. This is the strawberry sensation, that's strawberry shave ice. Mm. It's a very intense strawberry flavor. I also put strawberry sorbet on here. So, and real strawberries, so not a lack of strawberry. So we got to see how they make it too. She just pulled the block out and put it in like a blender and it just and it all just dropped into the cup. And it has a, a lot of strawberry flavor. I really like like the the strawberries on here. They're kind of like a just a really they're like sweet. I think they're kind of in a syrup. They're really good. Oh uh, sorry. The sorbet. I'm assuming it's different strawberry flavor. Oh yeah, it's a different consistency too. This is really good. They had a bunch of other flavors too. They had matcha, they had coffee. The coffee sounded good, but we both agreed strawberry was the winner. Look at that one. I really don't know if we're gonna be able to finish all of this. Especially since I have a belly full of soup <laughs> after all my broth. Well, Ice Monster was a fun way to end our little food tour here in Honolulu. We just had such a great time in this city and eaten so many great meals that it's gonna be hard to leave. decided to head back over to the Honolulu area and we're having dinner tonight at the Surfing Pig. in our order at Surfing Pig and Madeline's getting a burger. She's like, have I had a burger since we got here? And I said, I don't think so. So she's like, I'm getting a burger. I got the fish of the day. I ate a bunch of fish at the start of this trip and haven't really had as much recently. And they've got Ono as the catch of the day. And I had an Ono burger in Maui and I'm really looking forward to having a whole filet of Ono. It's a teriyaki version with some fresh vegetables. And this is an eclectic place and we're enjoying it so far. All right, here we go. First bite of Ono. Oh no, I'm eating Ono. Oh <laughs> so I can see how you could ground it. Yeah, see how you could ground it into a, a burger. Uh, it's quite good. I well, had an Ono burger. I swam with a lot of fish today, so <laughs> I'd eat one. <laughs> Well, this burger has a fried egg, it has bacon, it has onion strings, it has gouda cheese, and I got truffle fries with it because we're just going all in. It's huge. I don't know if I can eat it all. This is a huge burger. I'm gonna need help. Oh no. I'm saying oh no for a different reason. All right, let's just let's just go for it. It's cooked medium. It has some grilled onions on top too. It's very good, and it's just a very big burger. The burger was delicious. Like Adam said, I have not had a burger in a long time. 
who really hit the spot, but he has had to help me because it was massive with so many toppings and french fries on top of it. So it was a team effort on this burger here. Well, we just finished up at the Surfing Pig. That was definitely the meal that I needed after a day of snorkeling and hiking. That burger was huge, it hit the spot, and uh, it's a great way to end the day. All right, it is time for our luau here on the big island of Oahu. Madeline is excited. <laughs> Great so far. The host name is Cousin Billy and he's absolutely hilarious. They demonstrated how they cook everything and then the one guy climbed up a co uh, climbed up the palm tree. So um, very entertaining so far. We're having a great time and looking forward to dinner. This is a huge plate of food. We have Kahlua pork, we have rice, we have fish, macaroni salad, the tomato, well, momi tomato, and then there's also coconut cake for dessert, which I would like to just start with now, but I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> this is chicken, it's not fish. I just didn't know what it was. But it's very good. Everything's really, really good. The Kahlua pork is very good too. And we're happy to have a salad because we love it whenever we get salad. <laughs>
<laughs> great luau experience. If you are in Oahu, Toa Luau is uh, the way to go do. because we had a great time. Our first luau ever and had an absolute blast. The food was great. The show was great. Yeah. Cannot recommend it enough. We are at the Aloha Beer Company at their Kaka Ako Brewery. So this is actually where they make their beer. The brewery is right back there. And we decided to order a flight so we can try a little bit of everything. So we got the Aloha Blonde because, well, and then the Aloha Fest, which is one of their newest beers that they added to the menu. We got the Hefeweizen, which said it has a banana and clove flavor, so I think that sounds kind of interesting, a little hint of banana in my beer. And then we ordered the Red Zeppelin, uh, because Adam loves red ales, and I love a clever beer name. So this is our flight here, and we're just going to work our way down. Well, we're going blonde first. It's the lightest. I always suggest going lightest to darkest. You know, I think every craft brew spot does a blonde and has a pun on blonde. And the Aloha Blonde is a pretty good pun. This is the Aloha Fest. I absolutely love this time of year, fall, and I love the idea of a Hawaiian version of Oktoberfest. Aloha Fest, I could become a big fan of that. I think it's actually become a tradition around our household. Eating Hawaiian food, drinking Hawaiian beer in October, I'm calling it a little hot mess. I might throw a party. You're all invited. It's only like 12 hours plane ride that way, so. And I quite like this beer. In fact, it's a specialty beer right now they have, and uh, people have been coming in with growlers, and I would be filling up growlers of that and drinking it all month long. Really it's that good. Hefe Weissen. Hefe Weissen. Hefe Weissen. So this is the Hefe Weissen. It's actually a lighter color beer. I think it's probably a little, uh, a little heavier. Ooh, that's really good. I enjoyed this flight here. All four beers we had at Aloha Beer Co. were really good. And if I lived in Honolulu, I'd be here all the time with my growler, filling up on their different seasonal beers and my favorites. If you want to see more from our adventures in Oahu, click right here. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.